The model I'm going to present to you begins like this. There is a loosely defined environment, and in that environment, there is a process happening, and in that process, there is a management. Now, that, I think, is, is a true statement for any organization. I'm trying to develop something which will apply to everything we've been looking at. But we could, we could you localize it where you like. You localize it on a church, you localize it on a business, on a company, on a government. I think you will find that you've got a management trying to regulate a process within an environment. Although those things are built into each other, I'm going to split them apart because I want to examine some features of them. There's the environment, there's the process, and there's the management. Now, because they are embedded in each other, we may say, look at that. This has got, the management has got to communicate with its process, with its workers, with its electorate, whatever it is. And the process has to communicate with the environment and say, here we are and this is what we do. And similarly, there's a return loop where the environment is saying to the process, well, that's all very well, but you're polluting the environment, for instance. And the process goes back to the management and reports, we are doing what you told us to do or what we agreed to do or whatever it is. That's not objectionable, I hope, is it? As a, as a basic structure. I want now to introduce a measure. We are used to measuring everything in terms of what we used to call the four M's. In the 50s, everybody on this kind of podium was talking about men, materials, machinery, money. So this is what you measured. Well, I think that our new way of looking at things tells us, our non-reductionist way of looking at things, tells us that that is itself a reduction so what is the uniform, basic commodity that we have to deal with in managing, in organizing? Is there one thing underlying the problems of men, materials, machinery, and money? Well, I suggest to you that there is, and th this thing is complexity. Our problem is managing complexity. If, if something is obvious and easy, we just do it. And the more complex it gets, the more hard it is to manage, the more organization we have to put in. And that's where our problems are generated. So if we are trying to deal with complexity, then let us have a measure of complexity. And in cybernetics, that measure is variety. Now, that is a word you all know, and uh, it means what it means in ordinary speech. But in cybernetics, we give it a very precise definition because we are trying to develop a science here. And the definition is, of this is the number of possible states of the system. We tend to think that measures have to be precise in management because of the reductionist approach. So we have trained enormous numbers of accountants, enormous numbers of lawyers, and other people of, of that very reductionist shape to look at our operations and measure them, and they do it precisely. So if you say, well, there are supposed to be uh, 10,000 pesos here and there are only 9,999, one is missing. Did you take it or did you? I mean, it's that precise. Well, we can't do that in measuring the number of possible states of the system. But you remember that I invoked relativity theory, I invoked Hegel's axiom of internal relations. And that's what I want to use, because I want to argue that the variety that the manager possesses, that little v, supposing we could count it, is definitely less than the variety of the process he's trying to control. You can't argue that, can you? It's bound to be the case. He doesn't know everything about what's going on here. And in the same way, this variety is bound to be bigger than the process variety. So for, we will be using measurement of variety in two ways which are fundamentally different from the reductionist way. The first is that relative statements are helpful and valid 
And the second, as you will find later, is that statements of probability are valid. The reason I started with all that business about reductionism is to show that you don't have to defend a new kind of measure if you change the, the epistemology of, of your attack. This kind of thinking gets attacked by people who are defending the old system. And one can see why. Does it matter that these varieties are bigger than each other? Well, the first thing we can see is it's pretty hard for the manager to, to manage something that's bigger in variety. You know, it's, it's an uphill task. And I would like you to think about how he does it. When I say he, I'm talking about a whole management group or a government or any, anybody who is trying to control something, regulate something. If this variety is too small in respect to that, what do we have to do to it? Anyone? Increase it. So let me use the electrical symbol, and I say, well, we have to amplify the variety there. And how do you do that? Well, you have many methods of increasing your managerial efficiency with your workforce, for instance. You provide them with training schemes, and you try to increase that variety. And what, what's the answer on this? Obviously, the electrical symbol for attenuation, we have to decrease the variety that's coming to us. Now, as we have proceeded in management science and the use of computers, I wish to point out to you we have done almost the opposite of this. Because instead of attenuating the variety, we have massively increased it. Because, we have said very proudly, we've put it all into a database, here it comes, whoosh! And you drown the manager in the stuff. And he, poor devil, is sitting there saying, well, I expect there's something very important in all this readout. I wonder what it is. And that is not much of an exaggeration. I've been a manager. I've, I've, I've experienced all that. So we've, we have got the equation upside down because all this massive information coming in here attenuates his ability to do anything about it instead of amplifying it. So clearly, in what's coming, I shall have to be able to convince you that, that the model I'm going to be talking about can handle that. Now, you'll notice we have exactly the same thing going on here. You're running a business. How do you amplify what you do into the environment? Advertising, perfect example. Market research. The advertising market research here. Well, I find that a very nice model because I, I say in, you heard about a book called Brain of the Firm, which was published in 1972. That book says, that every single management technique you can think of is fundamentally, in terms of variety, one of these four things. And I've listed most of them. Can it, would anybody like to give me an example of a, mani a, a standard management technique? The sort of thing... So it's there, isn't it? Because it, because it, uh, it gives you the optimal. So optimization is such a technique. Um, management by objectives is, is... That's the sort of word I wanted to get from you is such a, a technique. And we've already spoken of advertising and so forth. Well, in all the years since 1972, which is nearly getting on for 20 years, nobody has ever said, no, you're wrong, we do it this way, and you can't explain that like this. So I've got a lot of confidence in this as the basis, excuse me, of my model.